For a time in the early 19th century, the east coast of Florida was home to a number of large plantations that grew and processed sugarcane. During tensions with the Seminole, the antebellum homes and their large sugar mills became targets and were burned to the ground. But a few remnants of the sugar mills continued to hang on into the 21st century thanks to preservation efforts by the state and other groups. Today, we're showing you the ruins of one of those sugar mills. We're on the east coast of Florida, between Ormond Beach and Flagler Beach. 200 years ago, the land I'm walking on would have been the Bulow Plantation. The main crop here was sugar, and the mill that saw on this property was the largest sugar mill in East Florida. In 1821, South Carolina merchant Charles Bulow purchased more than 4,600 acres of wilderness bordering a tidal creek that is today known as Bulow Creek. About half of the acreage was cleared by slave labor, and crops like indigo, cotton, rice, and most importantly, sugarcane were planted. A large plantation house in the French colonial style was constructed. According to an 1830 census, just under 200 enslaved men, women, and children lived in 46 cabins on the property. The small structures had shingled roofs and wood siding. They were arranged in a semicircular pattern around the main house. Charles didn't have much time to enjoy what he had created. He died suddenly in 1823 at the age of 44. Bulow's only son, John, who was 17 at the time, inherited the plantation. For more than a decade, the plantation flourished under John's management. During the holiday season in 1831, artist and naturalist John James Audubon is said to have visited the plantation and explored this area for his ongoing study of American birds. With the outbreak of the Second Seminole War in 1835, Indians living near Bulowville, as it was known, started becoming more aggressive. They believed the plantation land to be theirs. Faced with the ongoing threat, Bulow decided to evacuate the property and relocated in St. Augustine. In January 1836, the plantation was burned to the ground by the Seminoles. It was written, a great rosy glow could be observed all the way in St. Augustine. The charred, weathered, mossy coquina ruins are all that's left. The sugar mill, several wells, a spring house, and the crumbling foundation of the mansion and slave cabins. The main house and furniture inside were valued at $5,000. The house was never rebuilt. Most of the land that had been cleared in the 1820s has been reclaimed by dense forest. Now it looks much as it did when the Seminoles lived here.
The park covers some 150 acres today. The ruins, which are easily accessible via a concrete walkway, are listed on the National Register of Historic Places. An interpretive center tells the plantation's history. This screen pavilion overlooking Bulow Creek is available to rent for birthday parties and family reunions. There are also outdoor picnic tables and a few grills. Bulow Creek is part of the State Canoe Trail and is an excellent spot to view wildlife. Kayaks can be rented hourly or all day from the park office. Small power boats can be launched from a boat ramp on site. If observing nature by foot is more your speed, there's a 6.8 mile hiking trail that you can use. Here are some other things to know before you go. Thank you for watching. We have lots of interesting videos on this area's rich history and travel guides from around the great state of Florida and beyond here on the channel. Hope you can take some time to check them out. From what was once known as Buloville. See you next time.